today's the day. What is this? What's going on over here? What is this? Well, the biker. What's his name? Biker? Biker? Bike? What biker? There's a biker? What? No, seriously, like there's a biker? Did they go the whole way? Yeah, they biked yeah. I did a ride. Yeah. yeah no did. way. Yeah. He's coming right now. Yeah. Wow. It just started like 30 years ago. So. Oh, gee. Well, I... <laughs> no, I'm serious. I didn't know about this. <laughs> and we're serious. Yeah, I've been doing this for about 30 years. Wow. <laughs> How do more people not know about this? Like, how did I not know about this? I'll be honest, I've never heard of this before. You biked this entire trail? This guy, this guy, and myself, for right now, and there's a couple others out there. Oh my gosh, what is this called? What is this, a, is this a, a public a, event? What is it? A, um, I'm serious, I don't know, I'm dead serious. I did our trail invitation. Yeah. Yeah, oh my. take a test right now. I know, I'm like, uh. <laughs> oh my gosh. It started as I did a ski. I don't even know when that was. Probably mid eight, mid eighties, early eighties. Mm -hmm. And then there was I did a bike, and then you know a year or two later, and then they merged together to become the I did a sport, mm -hmm. which was bike, ski, or foot travel. So how many people do you think really want to sponsor an event that this isn't really known? <laughs> no, but that's a thing. That's what I'm here to do. Like, like I see this, I want it to get known because no, we want it to too, but it's still a very grassrootsy such a niche right we're we're looking to grab the same experience that the dog mushers are mm -hmm. the the snow machine racers are doing like we're just doing it in a different way but i think at the at the end of the day we're all in it for a certain personal satisfaction yeah that yeah. ends up to be the same mm -hmm. um and so that's what i think is really cool about this this has been my seventh year doing this so you know there's something that draws me back every time so this is really interesting. The Iditarod isn't just the uh, the sled dog race. Now it's it's like turning into um, I don't know, like a test of human ability. I'm just looking at this thing, going, "Where's the press? Like, where where's the press? Where are the people talking about the story? Why, how come I never heard about it? Like, these guys have been out there since the first. What's today? It's like the 17th or something like that." My God, they don't, they don't even really have protection out there. They have a sat phone, but like even that is iffy because if they lose battery, I mean, they're completely screwed. The crazy thing about all this is there's no price. Like they're not, they're not competing for anything. I think, I think the most there was was maybe a duffel bag put together by people just as a gift, but yeah, they're, they're just doing it because. <laughs> So today's turning out to be a really interesting day. It's a, uh, a day of hurry up and wait, meaning I have to stay here, stay kind of close to City Hall where KTVA uh, has their, their stuff set up, um, just so later on tonight I can go out on a snow machine to safety, which is the last checkpoint before the uh, mushers hit the finish line. Uh, and then I'm gonna actually ride in on the snow machine right behind the musher that wins. Right now is just kind of the time where I'm like, all right, let's just relax, let's, let's hang out. Let's watch people. I love watching people. A lot of people are starting to drink. I'm seeing a couple drunk people here and there. It's kind of funny. So this is Jen. This is Jen, Dallas's wife. I just so happen to run into her. And okay, so what? what is this, Jen? Well, these are the kennels. We're going to get them ready for Dallas's team. Okay. Every year we ship them up from Anchorage and they serve as temporary dog houses while the dogs are in Nome. Mm -hmm. As soon as they get here, they need a hot meal and a nice warm straw bed. And that's what we're getting these kennels set up for. We're going to use some zip ties, put them together, and then when it's time for them to fly Mom. home, they fly home in the kennels. Mom! Hi, Eddie. Used to, we would ship them out almost immediately, mm -hmm. like the next morning after they got in. But Dallas started missing them. He kind of has to go through a transition from living on the trail with the dog team to being a gnome and mm -hmm. he wake up in a panic and not be able to see his dogs. It's like they're already at the kennel, they're at home. Mm -hmm. So he's requested from now on that we keep them here for a couple days so he can come down and be okay. with them. Okay, that's really cool. That's really, really cool. Hi. Okay, looks like we're gonna have to put the top on this one. I'll just go ahead and bring it over here just like this. And remove this little door here. 
move this to the side and then we'll move this. There we go. And then we'll take this little top and we'll put the top on. There we go. There we go. Ready for all the puppies. Now we gotta put the door on. There you go, hold the door. You gonna hold the door? What? All right, so everything's all set up. I had to help them. Those, these things are stubborn. Like, oh my God, stubborn. The, the little dog houses wouldn't quite fit, so you had to churn them real hard. Hey, at least you gave me something to do. I was sitting on a bench bored out of my mind. You guys saw that. I was watching a helicopter going, I wish I was up there. <laughs> oh my God, you're calling Dally ugly too? Yes, oh. Dally is an ugly son. Guys, guys. Okay, remember at the checkup, Dallas was saying, he's like, oh, this is the ugliest one of the team. Oh, come on. Yes. What's what's so ugly? Oh, he's, he's ugly as sin. When he runs, he sort of flounders down the trail. It's and the like way he runs. He's got knees and elbows like a seventh grade boy or something. <laughs> and then when he stands, he's, he looks like an old milk cow. He's got his sway back and like bony hips and he's all cow hocked. But yeah, I was like sitting there. I'm like, the dog doesn't look that bad. He looks like kind of like the other dogs, you know, a little muddy, but well, yeah. We don't breed him for looks, but we do sort of <laughs> judge him by a different standard and performance wise Dally has really exceeded our expectations we thought that he might make it to second third or fourth checkpoint and then he would be dropped and sent home because he just does not look like an athlete uh, well he's in White Mountain with Dallas right now yeah he's got the biggest heart and lungs of, of any of the dogs the ECG machine they said they'd never seen anything like it yeah um, that was wild running on heart <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I find this hilarious it's like get back out here oh, 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 oh. <laughs> okay, so I'm back at the house and uh, it's it's actually super early. It's like 6.30 or something like that, but I've got to pass out. I've got to like get some sleep. By the way, 6.30 p.m., not 6.30 a.m. I said super early. Uh, I've got to be up all night because uh, we, don't, we don't think Dallas is actually going to arrive here at the finish line until like 8 a.m., but I need to get to safety, that previous checkpoint, the last checkpoint, I need, to, I need to probably be there by probably midnight. So we're gonna jump on a snow machine at like 11, 15 or something like that and then drive in the night. I hope the Northern Lights are out. Like that's gonna be amazing to see. <sighs> oh damn, it's that time. I'm so excited, so, so excited. So me and Bubba, this is Bubba. We're about to drive all the way from Nome to safety. We're gonna wait there for Dallas and then drive behind Dallas all the way into the finish line. Damn. Oh my gosh, the sky is clear. We're actually gonna see Northern Lights on the way. We just stopped because all of a sudden there's a huge melt right here. I don't know what this is, but that's not gonna look good for the mushers. Dude, you guys, the Northern Lights are over my head right now. This is like the best snow machine ride ever. <laughs> all right, so I've made it to safety. Guys, check this place out. How cool is this? There's so much money all over the walls. It's like ridiculously, wow, that's, you said like 6,000? That's what you guess. <laughs> well, I mean, if this attracts people, then I guess it's worth it, but like 6,000? That's, that's, all, they're real, are they? Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, I see. You just write your name and, and, and put yeah, the name on. Yeah, yeah. So you have to get on the wall. Oh, you know what? I do have a dollar. All right. There we go. I am having the hardest time trying to find where to put this thing. I thought, over the door? No, everybody else has that idea too. That's pretty common. Up there? Mm, no room. All right, there we go. In the perfect place, right in front of the throne. <laughs> yeah. I love this, by the way. Go make yellow snow. <laughs> hey, guys. Down layer, a couple layers. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. Hey, Reef, you ready, buddy? Reef, G. There you go, G. All right. All right. Good? 
God, you guys, we're seeing like reds and purples and greens. We just stopped, we're like, whoa! <laughs> How did he do? You guys been, you did good. You guys been pacing him like that all the way out? Just behind, as much as we could stay back. Wow. Is that okay? Or do you need us back further? I'd be surprised if he doesn't punch you in the nose when you get to town. If that's running, you might want to turn this off. So this is why we're really out here. See that helicopter up there? That's KTVA. And I have a satellite phone to reach the helicopter to tell the uh, helicopter where the team is, the dog team, so that they know when to uh, start the live broadcast and do all that. So my job is just about done. And then all I have to do is follow the team in and film for Dude Like Hella. Awesome. <laughs> we're getting closer and closer to the end. I think the uh, um, insider guys are putting cameras on uh, on Dallas's ride. I'm talking to myself, don't worry. Alright guys, this is it. We're going in, we're going in. <laughs> back it up a little bit, back it up a little bit. Good right job. Keep going? Yeah, keep going. I'm doing this too. <laughs> just because of a lucky thing on YouTube. Wow. We got the moose and little squirrel up here. It's like Rocky and Bullwinkle. You did such a great job. Such a great job. You're so good. I saw you. And the champion goes nom 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 nom. <laughs> These the dogs best. are amazing. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. amazing. This whole, everybody, the, the dogs, the vets, the mushers, all the people involved. Everything came together. Yeah. And yeah. they worked so hard to make this happen. Absolutely. Am I in the shot? I saw you pointing up, man. Great respect for the history of this race. Three championships still in your 20s. Can you assess the accomplishment for us? So far, I've been uh, doing what I love, man. Watching dogs, making it fun, keeping it fun. And it seems like as long as you take care of the dog team, you know, make good decisions, good things with? will happen. The wins are uh, a result of doing what we love. Hey, Jen, where are you going to cash a check that big? Wells Fargo, right down the street. Oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> Dallas, I don't think the key's gonna fit, I'm just saying. have to hang it back on the wall of shame in the shop. We have all the stuff like this and the giant checks and the quite a collection in there. That's awesome. Where'd it go, Dallas? Appreciate it. Well, that's over. Let's go home. 
No, seriously though, like I'm really excited to go home. This whole experience has been amazing. But I miss my bed. I miss regular food. I miss warm. <laughs> I hate to say it, I do. I miss warm just a little bit. It's not so bad today. What's up, buddy? Oh my gosh, look who it is. Good footage? Oh yeah, it's my favorite GCI guy. Yeah. What's up, buddy? What's up, Bam. Man? How you doing? <laughs> good, good, good. Did you see the crab fishing video? Yeah. No, you posted it. Yeah, yeah, oh, I posted man. it. Yeah, yeah. I'll check it out. Tony wanted to see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tony wanted to know if you're back in town. And he's like, man, I gotta. They, 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 he, we'll take him hunting. We'll take him fishing anywhere he wants to go. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I just I want to go home and relax first. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then it's on. Yeah. And then it's on. All right, let's go see how the puppies are doing. Because as Greg Coe says, puppies, puppies, puppies. So finally they get to sleep and they are gonna sleep, sleep, sleep. Not bad for a sled made of hockey sticks. How are they looking? Good. Good, good. Not used to sleeping in a house after. Yeah, I, I mean, Jeez. they have dog houses and they will not sleep in them. They prefer the hay. He's like, okay, there's there's the house, yeah, but I'd rather just have the hay. This is cool. It's a little squirrely. Yeah, the little orange coyote we call him. <laughs> he, uh, is one of six. We raised the whole litter. His mm -hmm. brother's just down from him. And when they were about five months old, it was time to take them out of the puppy pen and give them their own house and put them on a chain. Mm. And little Reef decided to go wild. So he grew up friendly in the house mm -hmm. and he just got all squirrely. We couldn't catch him, so he ended up staying in the pen for like an extra two months or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Went back to normal after a couple months. <laughs> He's still ticklish though. He doesn't like his feet touched, no. which is unusual for a sled dog. Oh, uh. hero. Yeah. He's quite big for a sled dog. He's huge. Yeah. Um, We've never had a dog this big race, and it became obvious when he was a yearling mm -hmm. that he is what we would call too big to be a sled dog. And we do tours, so those two big dogs are for racing are usually really valuable. Mm -hmm. Running tours, pulling, pulling big heavy sleds for short distances. Yeah. And so we decided to put him in training anyway and give him a chance, and we expected him to get tired and drop out after a month or so. But uh, nobody told him he was too big to be a sled dog. He just He's won a, his second Iditarod and he's four years old. Right. And he just won it and lead. Last year he came in and huh. swing. That's awesome. Really awesome. And they, I mean, they don't look tired at all. That's the thing about the dogs. Is you're right. Just like you said, they're going to come in here wanting to still run. And... Aye. Yeah. Wow. This place cleared out quickly. And it's time for daybreak. Ready to go. Look at this. All by myself. <laughs> Well, today's the day I get to go home. Covering my face because I'm just so tired. I don't, I don't look good. I watch the news. <laughs> yeah, let's just leave that down. This, this is much prettier. But yeah, so we're heading home. I finally get to see Kristen. I'm excited about that, and uh, I finally get to experience my, my own bed, <sighs> and see my animals. I miss my kitties. I miss Penny. I just, I miss home. This was amazing. This was a lot of fun. But it's time to go home. Ugh, nope.
Yay, yay, yay. Oh my God. Deal with the grossness. <laughs> Saying goodbye to sunshine, saying goodbye to warm Heading to Alaska where ice will be the norm So much to see, so much to do And the best part 